For me, becoming a data analyst was a process that took me four years. Wait, what? Four years? Yes, that's correct. Four years. In this video, I'm going to explain how I stumbled into clinical data analytics and what I learned from some of my blunders along the way. So I had just graduated from a four-year university, except I spent five years doing it. I earned a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a Bachelor of Science in Biology. At the time, I didn't know what SQL or Tableau was. I didn't even know that I wanted to be a data analyst. All I knew was Excel, which I was pretty good at, and that eventually helped me get a job that would be a nice precursor to data analytics, but more on that later. Now, at the time, I wanted to be a doctor, and so I was preparing to apply apply to medical schools, but I didn't have good grades in my science classes, I was only interested in a highly competitive branch of medicine, and I was too broke to even apply to medical schools. So I took a break and I went to a job fair. My friends with computer science degrees all got jobs super easily. I struggled to get hired anywhere. In fact, the only place that would hire me was a company called Scribe Stat. This was a company that hired college students to learn how to use an electronic medical record system called EPIC that's used in hospitals. I would then provide technical assistance to doctors needing assistance in navigating or troubleshooting EPIC in the hospital. So I took the job and before I could start I had to get my training. So they gave me like one hour of training and then my boss said alright you are going to be at the beck and call of any doctor that needs help in the hospital and they have more training than you and they're probably going to be mad and you're gonna be doing this for three months, starting on day one when we go live. Good luck. So that went as well as you might expect. On day one, I was a deer in the headlights. I was trying to help where I could, but I really wasn't helping. And that continued for the next couple of weeks. It was super intimidating. I was dealing with doctors that were frequently yelling at the computer and sometimes yelling at me. Little did I know that I was witnessing a process that was unfolding across the whole country. Believe it or not, until the last decade, most hospitals did not have an electronic medical record system, and it was difficult to store patient records in mass in a digitalized format. It was a trial by fire, but it was a very important experience in that it helped me get used to working with doctors, and it helped me get used to EPIC, which would be important later on. I also made the realization that I did not want to be a doctor, especially after seeing how stressful their jobs could be. But I knew that I still wanted to work in healthcare because I still found it very intriguing and I loved the idea of helping patients. So my job with that company was coming to an end because it was only a three month stint. So I applied to 200 jobs and I heard back from one job. That job was for a data abstractor position at my university. Now, data abstractor simply means data entry, but specifically in healthcare. The combination of my epic experience with Excel is what really helped me get that job. In this role, I was tasked with pulling out specific information out of a patient's medical record and then entering that into a data portal or data registry. I would pull information like what kind of comorbidities did this patient have, like diabetes? Was this patient a smoker? Did they have certain antibiotics prior to surgery? Did they have complications after surgery like sepsis or surgical site infections? I got to learn medical concepts and terminologies in a lot of different branches of surgery like weight loss surgery, general surgery, heart surgery, lung surgery. I did this for a couple years then I started to get really bored of that. So I was looking for something new in healthcare and I had only a vague notion of what I wanted to do. Then I attended a seminar at my university where someone talked about how hundreds of thousands of patients die every year as a result of avoidable medical errors and that really intrigued me and I knew that I wanted to do something about that but I didn't know how so I looked into getting a master's in health administration degree I thought hey maybe I could help with this if I became a manager or an administrator in a hospital and they make good money, so why not? So I applied to my university Masters of Health Administration program and I interviewed and I was offered a position. That program would cost me $70,000, so I decided to work part-time to somewhat offset the costs of tuition. In the MHA program, I learned about legal issues in healthcare, critical issues in public health, 
the finance and accounting side of healthcare, using statistics to improve processes in a hospital. My favorite subject though is quality improvement and patient safety. And it was the thing that I wanted to learn the most about while I was in the program. And we also did a lot of presentations, like every week. And every project and presentation we did, we did it in a team that we were assigned to from the very beginning of the program. It was in this program that I learned that data is extremely crucial to the day-to-day -day workings of a hospital. We were given a lot of assignments involving data, and I loved those assignments. Because I had a lot of experience in Excel, I became known as the data guy on my team. Then after the first year was over, we were required to do summer internships. So I took a job at a rural hospital in the quality improvement department as this was my favorite subject. While I was in that internship, one of my friends that was also working there at the time said, Hey Josh, you love data. Have you ever heard of Tableau? And I said, No, Tableau, what's that? Never heard of it. So I went to the Tableau website that night and I downloaded a free trial of Tableau. And I started dabbling with it. I connected it to a data set that I was using at the time and I was just blown away by what it could do. Within 30 minutes, I managed to create this map that had this gradient density of how many people lived in certain zip codes and what chronic conditions they had. It was at that point that I knew that I wanted to do that for the rest of my career, and I knew that that little dashboard that I built in 30 minutes could get me a job somewhere. Now before I move on, if you like this video so far, please consider hitting that like button. That'll help my channel grow, and it will also help me know if I'm providing the right content to you. So now it's the second year of the MHA program, and I start developing a better appreciation for the issues in healthcare and how data can be used to help solve those issues. And this is where I really started to intensify my efforts to do something with data. I use Tableau more often in my presentations. At this point, I really started to realize that what I wanted to be was a data analyst and that I needed one more skill to become a data analyst and that was SQL. So I dabbled in SQL as well and I learned it at a website called sqlzoo.net. But there was one problem. The MHA program wasn't really designed to train people to become data analysts. It was more geared towards people who wanted to become managers or administrators. I came to the realization that I love data, but I did not love the idea of becoming a manager or an administrator. So then I thought, hmm, what do I do now? So I talked to my faculty mentor, and he referred me to one of his former students who also loved data that worked at a local hospital. She worked in the quality improvement department, so I reached out to her and asked her if she could meet with me to do an informational interview. And in that informational interview, she talked about the work that she did with her team to improve patient safety and the quality of care in clinical processes. Things like how do we detect and treat sepsis as rapidly and effectively as possible or how do we ensure that newborns and their mothers are receiving the safest patient care possible? Basically figuring out what are we doing wrong in our treatment of patients and how could we do better? All of that requires a lot of data analysis. So after the Q&A, she told me that she had a job opening for a quality consultant position. I told her that I would apply and then she fast-tracked me into the interview process. I prepared a whole week for that interview, so I was really prepared. And I had a Tableau portfolio to show the hiring manager during the interview. That portfolio looked like garbage. And being a fresh graduate with little to no experience before applying to that job, I was really underqualified for it and was cautiously optimistic. But that little tiny amount of Tableau experience that I had combined with my preparation for the interview was enough to actually get me the job. And I was offered it the very next day. So I start this job and I start working on these Tableau projects just like I had hoped, but I still wasn't actually a data analyst at this point. I was a consultant and my role was to meet with doctors and clinicians to figure out weaknesses in the clinical process, how to measure those things and how to improve them. So a few months later into that job, the only data analyst in that department announces that she is resigning. Let's call her Sean. So my boss calls me into her office and says, Josh, Sean is quitting. We need someone to fill this data analyst position. 
you like data, do you want to be the new data analyst? And so at that point I was just over the moon because I realized this was my golden ticket to start doing data analytics and making a career out of this. So I said yes. And then Sean trained me on all of the data processes that she managed in the hospital. And because I had already known a little bit of SQL combined with a lot of knowledge of Tableau and Excel, I was able to pretty quickly adapt to the job. And several jobs later, here I am still doing the work that I love. All right, so that was a pretty long road that I traveled and although I am happy for those experiences, I probably would have done things a little bit differently if I were to go back in time. I would have probably double majored in computer science and public health when I was an undergrad and that way I would have probably saved myself an extra two years and $70,000. Computer science is a very versatile degree. You can work in software engineering, data analytics, and that public health exposure would have given me a nice competitive advantage over people that didn't have that domain knowledge. I also probably would have spent that time in my undergrad learning tools like Tableau, Power BI, and SQL so that I was ready to hit the ground running when I applied to those jobs. In the end, my master's in health administration equipped me with a ton of business knowledge about healthcare and hospitals. And it does give me a nice competitive advantage over other candidates when I'm applying to different hospitals. So if you decide to go back to school and get your master's degree, just be aware that it's very costly. So you're gonna have to decide if the juice is worth the squeeze. Also keep in mind that unless you're very serious about pursuing healthcare as an industry, there's probably better degrees out there for you than an MHA degree. For example, an MBA is way more versatile and it could land you in probably just about any industry you want. Now, if you're a data analyst in healthcare, I'm super curious to hear how you ended up doing data analytics. So if you're comfortable sharing that, leave that in the comments down below. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching. If you aren't sure where to start in your analytics journey, I have a couple videos that you can get started on. I also have much more content on the way, so do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. And with that, I'll see you in another video.